Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do a rehousing and photography session of a species that I haven't kept before. It's Miscellana bradleyi, also known as the Eastern Mouse Spider. Now, these are very interesting spiders. They have a very unique appearance and they're in the family Actinopodidae. They share a somewhat similar appearance to funnel web spiders on first glance, but as you start to break down their morphology a little bit more, you can notice striking differences, uh, particularly in the eye grouping and the overall stocky build that they have. The males, like a lot of my gallimorph, will wander during the early autumn uh, early winter periods, they're often found and uh, misidentified as wandering funnel web spiders. Also, like a lot of my gallimorph males, they are sexually dimorphic. So, the males of the eastern mouse spider will have the, the typical uh, gangly legs, long legs, um, and a smaller body. And uh, this species in particular has a silver patch on the abdomen uh, that the males exhibit. The females uh, are quite similar across the species. There are other examples of sexual dimorphism in the Miscellana genus, uh, that being the red-headed mouse spider. The, the males have a striking uh, red carapace and chalicerae and it, it's quite unique not many people keep this species um, they a lot of people want them and they can be hard to find um, for sale uh, because everyone wants them in there and they're kind of rare because of the fact that their burrows are so difficult to find they they camouflage in really well with the natural surroundings um, and generally mouse spiders, most of them are very small individuals. So you, you only really come across the males when they're wandering or you come across females when somebody might be digging in their garden or uh, there might be some kind of um, demolition or uh, development happening, happening. Another similarity that these mouse spiders share with funnel web spiders is their venom makeup so they have similar compounds in their venom that make the anti-venom used for funnel web spiders actually effective on mouse spider bites now it is pretty well known by a lot of people in the spider community that mouse spiders will actually dry bite quite a lot of the time which means Obviously, they don't produce venom in their bite. It is something that happens across spiders, not something you see much of in funnel webs. You see when they are defensive, little droplets of venom will form on their fangs. And this isn't something that happens as much in mouse spiders. They quite often dry bite. Now, that being said, every bite from a mouse spider should be treated as medically significant. You should seek treatment just as a precaution. Uh, and it's the same advice that I give to people who are uh, bitten or who are working with snakes that are venomous. I would always recommend erring on the side of caution and seeking treatment for any kind of bite uh, from a known venomous or potentially dangerous animal. So I have a juvenile here and we're going to take it out and do a couple of photos and then we're going to rehouse it into its enclosure. Uh, it's quite a typical enclosure that I do um, sand and clay mix together with uh, moss and um, a few other bits of uh, wood and uh, leaves to kind of make it a bit more naturalistic.
here you can see that the mouse spider on first glance actually looks quite similar to uh, a funnel web spider. Uh, they have that jet black glossy carapace. Although once we get a bit closer, we can see some differences with the mass spider in particular. They have a more stocky build. They're generally a lot smaller. And if we look at the eye arrangement, the mouse spider will have eyes that are in a wider shape across the carapace, whereas funnel webs have eyes that are more closely grouped together. Another thing about mouse spiders that is totally unique is that the offspring will disperse through a method called ballooning. Now, that's not something that's very uncommon with modern spiders, with Araniomorph, uh, the young will shoot out a little bit of web from their spinnerets and let the wind catch it and that's how they disperse, they'll be carried on the wind. Now that's unique among my Gallimorphs as they generally have a small dispersal method so there's a lot of speciation that occurs with megalomorph such as tarantulas funnel webs because they can't travel that far distance now with mouse spiders with this ballooning method it means that they can travel a long distance on the wind which means there's less speciation there's only a handful of mouse spider species that we know of so far and they have a very broad distribution range so Miss Elena Bradley eye, for example, the eastern mouse spider is found all along the east coast uh, in Queensland, New South Wales, uh, as far south as uh, Victoria as well, and that's because of that ballooning method. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something about the mouse spiders, I'm still learning. Like I said earlier, this is my first mouse spider, but I find them very interesting, they're very unique among the agalomorph spiders that I'm passionate about and find very interesting. So yeah, I hope to get more in the future, uh, I'd like to find them in the wild at some point and have a bit of a look at their burrowing structures in the wild if you have any comments leave them below uh, any questions or any video suggestions just let me know thank you see you next time